Hi, welcome to Mormon Scripture Explorations. We're starting out uh, following the Latter-day Saint Gospel Doctrine study schedule with the Book of Mormon. My hope is to uh, go through and do some explorations on part of the Book of Mormon throughout the coming year. To begin with, I'd like to look at the title page of the Book of Mormon. You can see down at the bottom of the screen we've got uh, the web page of a blog in which uh, all sorts of things will be put up related to the Book of Mormon uh, following the study schedule. So if you're interested in pursuing this, you should take a look at the blog there that's uh, mentioned at the bottom. We're starting with the Book of Mormon title page, and it's important to note that according to Joseph Smith, this title page was taken from the last leaf of the Golden Plates. Now, it's not a modern composition, meaning that Joseph Smith isn't claiming to be the author of it, but saying that it's part of the ancient record. Now, it's interesting that in this case, he uh, says it's the last leaf, which of course is counterintuitive to modern conceptions where we put the title page at the first page, not the last page. But in fact, if you uh, look down at the little gray box, it contains there a reference to an article in Pressing Forward with the Book of Mormon that talks about the idea of the subscriptio, which is a Latin term meaning uh, writing a uh, essentially an introduction or a summary of a book when you've completed the book and you put it at an end. Obviously, uh, you can't write a summary of a book until the book has been finished, and although we can print them in the front of modern books, anciently you couldn't. You had to write a summary of the book after it was finished, and that meant it would be at the end. Anyway, uh, that's an interesting little uh, insight that uh, we will see reflected many times in the Book of Mormon, that it has all sorts of connections to antiquity that seem counterintuitive to the way modern people think. Also, throughout these uh, videos, a gray box will indicate a reference to some publication where a particular idea is discussed in more detail. Now, the title page also contains, uh, in the 1830 edition, and you're seeing there in the, on the right-hand side a, a photo of a page from an eight, uh, actual 1830 Book of Mormon. It uh, lists Joseph Smith as author and proprietor, and occasionally anti-Mormons have said, well, this is Joseph Smith claiming to be the author, he's not claiming it's an ancient book, and so forth. Um, this is all based on the way copyright laws were working. There were also people who were kind of plagiarizing the Book of Mormon, and Joseph Smith had to assert uh, his uh, authorship in order to prevent, to have a copyright, therefore prevent people from plagiarizing it. Um, at any rate, he's the author of the translation. That's absolutely true. It doesn't mean he's the author of the Book of Mormon. Now, of course, Non-Mormons say he is, Mormons say he's not, but that's the title page has no indication that he would be the author. And in the gray box there, you've got a couple of references to some studies that go into details on this. Uh, notice that I have some abbreviations here, B-M-E-T, and the main page is the Book of Mormon, the earliest text by Skousen. Uh, R-E-B-M is uh, re-exploring the Book of Mormon and so forth. These abbreviations that I'll have in these uh, videos are uh, can be found on my web page where I have a link to abbreviations. So if you want to look up some of these things, just pause the, the uh, video, write down the text, go to my web page, look it up, and you've got the abbreviation there. Now the current edition of the Book of Mormon has the title page uh, we see on the left there, the Book of Mormon, Another Testament of Jesus Christ. That was not in the original title page, which we see on the, on the right-hand side. So the, the title page has been changed slightly. Uh, it was added in 1981, but it's based on the uh, area in blue there on the title page, which says the purpose of the Book of Mormon is to convince Jew and Gentile that Jesus is the Christ. Uh, so it is, in fact, a legitimate uh, subtitle for the Book of Mormon, Another Testament of Jesus Christ, because the original ancient title page says exactly that. Now, the title page also introduces to us th the three main authors of the Book of Mormon. 
Book of Mormon has a very complex editorial and literary history, and that's another interesting fact, uh, the argument from complexity that Joseph Smith could not have written this because if he'd just been writing a novel, there's no reason to have all these really sometimes very bizarre um, editorial things that are going on with all sorts of letters and, and uh, speeches and sermons and quotations and on and on and on. At any rate, what we've uh, what scholars have come to conclude is that there were in fact three main editors or authors of the Book of Mormon. Uh, the first is Mormon, uh, who's mentioned in the area boxed in blue there. Then we've got Nephi, and we've got Moroni, and all three are mentioned uh, on the title page. So the Book of Mormon itself reflects the triple authorship of Nephi, Mormon, and Moroni, and this can be. Uh, we could call these people the three eyes, that is to say, the three people who write in first person, I, Nephi, did such and such. And they're also the three people who observe the action and record the action. Uh, Mormon is a, as both an abridger and also a, a, an author of certain texts himself. So the three uh, first person authors are Nephi, Mormon, and Moroni, and this has been studied in detail in Grant Hardy's Understanding of the Book of Mormon a great book which looks at the, the literary issues surrounding uh, these three authors, just out from Oxford University Press. The rest of the title page also contains a lot of important information and kind of summarizes the significance and meaning of the book. First of all, it says it's an abridgment, and you can see these words are going to be highlighted in, in blue, uh, kind of the idea I'm talking about in any given slide. So it's an abridgment of a record. There were more records. Uh, the Book of Mormon itself had a sealed, uh, two-thirds of it was sealed. The uh, Book of Mormon talks about all sorts of other records and Mormon abridging the records and so forth. So it's an abridgment. It's not a full record, and it's abridged with a very specific purpose and intent in mind. And, and they tell us what that purpose was, and uh, we'll discuss that in just a second. It's a record of the people of Nephi and the Lamanites. So these are the two main peoples although there's lots of other uh, actors and nations and uh, tribes and so forth. These are kind of the two main antagonists, culturally speaking and religiously speaking. Now, the Book of Mormon tells you precisely who the audience is. First of all, it's, it's written to the Lamanites. That is to say, the descendants of the Lamanites who are described in the Book of Mormon. They're called a remnant of the House of Israel. A lot of people uh, misunderstand the Book of Mormon as a as a history of the lost trend, ten tribes or something like this, that's not the case at all. It's a very specific uh, group descended from Manasseh uh, after the dispersal, dispersion of the ten tribes. So it's written to the Lamanites, but it's also written to the Jews and the Gentiles, which means it's written to everyone. There's a specific audience of the descendants of Nephi and Laman and Lehi, and then there's a secondary audience or a, a additional audience of Jews and Gentiles, which covers everybody. So the book is written for everyone, but with some special, uh, special uh, connection to the Lamanites. The book also, the title page, page claims a divine origin for the Book of Mormon. And this is really clear. It, it was written under divine inspiration by commandment of God and by the spirit of prophecy and revelation. It was also preserved by divine power. That is, it was sealed up and hid under the Lord so that the plates could survive until the time of Joseph Smith. And then finally, it was divinely translated. Uh, the Book of Mormon talks, uh, the title page here mentions, it comes forth by the gift and power of God, and the interpretation there was, uh, was by the gift and power of God. So what we see then is there is a divine... Uh, the origin for the Book of Mormon, it claims to be a divinely inspired, preserved, or translated book. The Book of Mormon then, or the title page then, tells us about the, um, the purpose of the Book of Mormon. And it's really got a twofold purpose that is associated with its twofold audience. First, the Lamanites. The text wants to show unto the Lamanite remnant of the House of Israel the great things the Lord had done for their fathers, that is to say, the origins of the, uh, or the peoples of the Book of Mormon and their experience with God. And it also wants the Lamanites to know that the covenants with the Lord are still in force and they will um, not be cast off. 
So that's the message to the Lamanites. The broader message then to the Lamanites, Jews and Gentiles, is that Jesus is the Christ. So the purpose of the Book of Mormon is to convince all people, Lamanites, Jews and Gentiles, that Jesus is the Christ. It's also, however, to convince us that God manifests himself to all nations. Now, that's a very interesting idea. We don't uh, see that. We tend not to look upon the Book of Mormon as a text about all nations, but there's all sorts of hints and passages which talk about God's interaction with peoples beyond the Jews, uh, and we'll look at some of those when we come across them. But uh, convincing people that God manifests himself to all nations is the secondary uh, purpose. The primary purpose is to convince people that Jesus is the Christ. Now, uh, another thing that the Book of Mormon, um, or that the title page mentions, is that uh, it rejects the idea of inerrancy. Uh, it specifically says if there are faults in the Book of Mormon, they are the faults, or they are the mistakes of men, wherefore condemn not things of God. That is to say, it expects that the book will have errors in it. It does not claim inerrancy. It rejects that idea, which was an important idea in the 19th century in relationship to Joseph Smith. Now notice um, my uh, comments are in blue boxes, uh, scriptural quotations and, and references, uh, cross-references and so forth are going to be in green boxes. So I've, I've given a couple passages here where the same idea is reflected elsewhere in the Book of Mormon. Uh, 1 Nephi 19, 6, Nephi says, If I do err, even did they err of old. That is, the people who wrote the Hebrew Bible erred. And that's an interesting thing reflected in, in Nephi's writing, that, that not only is the Book of Mormon contain errors, it's not inerrant, but the Bible itself is not inerrant. And that's an important uh, idea that we need to uh, remember when we're trying to read and understand the Book of Mormon. Uh, finally, Mormon 8.17 has an interesting passage. I've underlined the phrases there that are paraphrased in the title page. It essentially says the same thing. If there be faults, they are the faults of a man. If there are faults in the title page, they are the mistakes of men. You're not supposed to condemn the book or condemn God or you will be in danger of hellfire, or if you don't condemn it, you can be found spotless at the judgment seat. So uh, the exact uh, ideas there are paraphrased between those two passages. This is a phenomenon we call intertextuality, that is where the Book of Mormon quotes itself and it has allusions and references to itself, which is a very difficult thing to do if uh, you know, you're not, don't have a manuscript there before you can go back and read what it said and so forth. Um, anyway, intertextuality is another thing that's reflected in the Book of Mormon in all sorts of ways, both with the Bible, but also with the Book of Mormon itself. And here's the first example we have of that on the title page here. So in conclusion, the uh, title page tells us that it is part of the original Book of Mormon. It's an ancient document. It identifies Nephi, Mormon, and Moroni as the three primary authors and editors. It is written to the Lamanites, but also to all other peoples. The Book of Mormon claims divine origin for itself. Its purpose is to convince the readers that Jesus is the Christ and that God manifests himself to all nations. And the Book of Mormon rejects inerrancy for Scripture, both in the Bible and also in the Book of Mormon itself. So notice the title page gives us all sorts of interesting information and essentially sets the stage for the rest of the Book of Mormon. It is, in fact, a summary of the contents of the Book of Mormon written at the end, but we have it at the beginning of the Book of Mormon, uh, 